New nuclear worries North Korea's state-run TV warning of a second Korean war should South Korea and the U.S. hold an annual military exercise. To former Trump transition team member Kyron Skinner and retired Navy Captain Chuck Nash on what the U.S. should be doing right now. Well, Kyron, you look at you look at what the market is doing right now. The Dow is up 158 points. Uh, what Mike Pompeo, the head of the CIA, said yesterday seemed to calm a lot of nerves that, in fact, uh, we're not going to be uh, entering into a nuclear war. Uh, today we had a, an op-ed piece in the Wall Street <laughs> Journal. Rex Tillerson uh, and Secretary of Defense Mattis both <coughs> suggesting that you know we're 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 far from there yet. So. What should we believe? The rhetoric coming out into North Korea, which really hasn't changed much in 20 years, or what uh, the leaders of our country are saying, which seems to be calming the markets? Um, I think what you just said about the U.S. leaders calming the markets is absolutely true, because this is really the first major foreign policy um, national security test for the Trump administration. And it's remarkable to me, despite the fact that the administration has many positions unfilled across state, DOD, and other parts of the government. There is a unified um, um, position coming out of the leadership. Um, the um, op-ed that you just mentioned by Mattis and Tillerson um, speaks in very clear tone. It does. Um, they talk about the fact that um, a precondition for any negotiation with the North Koreans includes um, an end to their ballistic missile activity and their nuclear weapons activity. Um, and so this is not negotiations of the past, um, but ones in which the U.S. will take a very firm stand going in. Yeah, and I think a, that's a had change, a ripple effect it's, it's through a, the international community. We're a long, long way yes, from thermonuclear war. Cap Nash, there is, however, a still a big overhanging question, which is, which is Kim, by the way, you're about to see, this is in the White House, the president, of course, uh, went from his New Jersey retreat to the White House today. Uh, we're not sure what he'll be talking about. We can guess it might have something to do with Charleston. We can also, of course, guess it might have something to do with North Korea. Uh, we've got the two-minute warning, but uh, Captain Nash, I want to get you in quick. What about Kim? There is still an overhanging question about whether he's crazy enough to do something that requires a military response by us. I think he's willing to uh, press our buttons, but not press the button, because he knows if he presses the button and launches against Guam, that he's going to pay a, a severe penalty that could lead to regime change. What if China, he launches at all, Captain Nash, because there is a chance that he may have another test coming soon? Mm -hmm. No, uh, I, I think we've already been numbed to the test thing. It's when does he actually do something that, that violates um, uh, the sensibilities to the point where he's coming after a U.S. territory, i.e. Guam, or an ally, i.e. Japan. If that were to happen, then all hell's going to break loose. The Chinese have already told him if he does that, that they're not going to intervene and he's on his own. So I think he will continue to press our buttons, but not the button. Uh, Kyron, the death of Otto Warmbier, that was a very personal thing for all Americans. When he was jailed for about a year, came back and died a week later, that showed us if we did, needed another example, the brutality of the North Koreans, but in a very personal way, I think it affected the president very personally as well, no? Yes, absolutely. And if you um, think about what the administration has been saying, numerous people um, in the national security community in the past few days, they're separating out the North Korean people who are suffering at an unprecedented level from the regime. And they're making it clear that we're not anti-North Koreans, that we are deeply concerned about the illicit behavior of the regime. And if I may add something sure. to what your other But I may um, have to cut you off said. at any time because the president's about to speak, but with that proviso, go ahead. Okay, I'm a professor, so I'm used to talking a lot and quickly. Um, <laughs> I want to say that it's not just the United States. It's also our regional allies. The Japanese legislature in the past two years has talked about its willingness to take defensive measures and maybe even preemption, preemptive actions against the North Koreans. Um, the South Koreans are speeding up their THAAD deployments because of their, the North Koreans' behavior. This is a widening um, crisis of which the U.S. will not be the only one to respond. That's a great point. I think the Chinese and the North Koreans are beginning to understand that the international 
national community is much more in lockstep with the U.S. than at any point in the past. And Captain Nash, we were concerned about a change in the South Korean government, the fact that they mm -hmm. seem to be taking a more dovish a, a view of North Korea. Uh, some people suggest they may even reject some of these THAAD anti-missile systems that are there. Uh, but now it appears, uh, it appears they're getting a, a backbone, no? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the new president of South Korea, when uh, the United States was talking about building up THAAD resources in South Korea, said, no, we don't want that. Now he's had a change of heart because he's seen there is no way to deal with this North Korean dictator other than shows of strength and resolve. Uh, we want to thank Kyron and Captain Nash both. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it, Professor and Captain Nash.